All right, y'all, welcome back to Common Arms Channel. So today's reaction video is going to be another uh, Royal Marines reaction video. And this one is uh, sort of something that y'all have been recommending, but it's uh, more specifically Arctic warfare training in Norway. Now, uh, I haven't been to Norway myself, but when I was on deployment, we actually had a, a company go up to Norway and do this Arctic warfare training uh, with Royal Marines. Now, I don't think this video shows the, uh, the joint training, I think it's some separate thing that Royal Marines go through, but uh, I'm interested to see how they do and how they handle the, the Arctic warfare. Uh, they probably handle it a little bit better than you know U.S. forces, just because they're used to training in slightly colder environments and you know just more more like wet environments. So uh, I think they will do pretty well with this, and I've heard nothing but good things from like the Arctic warfare and mountain leaders of the Royal Marines. So we'll get into it and see how they do. The Royal Marines have been the UK's subject matter experts on cold weather warfare for decades. Our Arctic warfare history goes back to World War II when 14 Commando conducted raids on Norway based targets with highly trained men specialising in small boat operations and cross country skiing. More so already like they're talking about uh, their history and again from what we've seen with the Royal Marines they definitely do training based off of you know their needs and during World War II that was a big need for them and you know they they like to uphold that especially because having these specialties are you know having the specialties is crucial when you're talking about being like a world power so Arctic warfare is a big thing uh, you can't just ignore the possibility of fighting a war in those you know those cold environments you know the scandinavia region russia and what have you so it's very important to make sure they stay up to date and yeah they're talking about uh, fighting on skis and everything and it just sounds really cool so hopefully we get a little a little shot of that recently royal marines were stationed on the northern flank throughout the cold war to bolton nato defenses against the soviet threat week one of the cold weather warfare course is a non-tactical survival course where troops learn to live and ski in these unforgiving conditions. They are taught how to deal with dangers such as avalanches, cold weather injuries and survival situations. Being able to sustain yourself in a cold weather environment is half the battle. In the coming weeks the training will turn tactical and the weight carried while skiing will increase significantly with the addition of rifles and body armour. Soon, they'll be operating in these extreme conditions in a fully tactical capacity. So it's solid to be tactical in an environment, but if your sustainment is, is garbage, then it doesn't even matter if you can be tactical because the second you have to step away from being tactical or the second you need to you know, push the fight or what have you, you know, you're not going to be able to maintain that fight or sustain anything, which means it's going to fall apart very quickly. And the sustainment thing comes back to other historical contexts. I know specifically with the, uh, the Marines in the Korean War and whatnot, it was very hard for them to sustain because they weren't used to fighting in those environments. And it, again, they're, they were tactical, tactically proficient, but if you don't have the sustainment or the, the, the methodology for surviving in these sort of environments and operating in these environments, then it's not really going to matter how tactically savvy you are. So. It's very important that they're doing a week of that to make sure that they know how to survive in case, you know, worst comes to worst, they have to stay in these environments for an extended period of time. Crossing a frozen lake or river naturally comes with very serious risks. But sometimes the tactical advantage may warrant that risk. If the ice breaks instantly, cold shock grips the body. It's easy to panic, to hyperventilate, gasp, and take on water. Royal Marines are taught how to recognize and reduce the threat of cold shock, as well as a drill to exit the ice when assisted. Treading water in these conditions, a fighting aid male has around six minutes to escape. So, being in the military, especially talking about the Royal Marines, 
you, you have the ability to maintain your composure in stressful situations. However, something like this is, is a little bit different. It sort of turns into like mind over, over body. And people can get used to this if they do this a lot. You see videos where people like go into ice water and you know they're able to have a normal conversation. They're able to think clearly. And that's just because they've done that for a while. And then when they were able to get out, they're able to still function normally. But yeah, it's cool if you're preparing yourself to slowly get into that. But if you're not used to it and your body just all of a sudden is submerged into ice water, it's complete shock to your system. Now, the only thing um, I can really compare this to is uh, if you have ever gotten tased, then that's, that's kind of what it's like in the sense that your mind just pushes all of your thoughts out of your body real quick. And it takes a lot of focus and energy to refocus your body and you know tell your body what you want it to do. So that's sort of what they're dealing with right now is just being able to, you know, get control of their mind and and get themselves out of the water so they can actually survive and and even still push the fight. The body will begin to seize up and extremities stop working. <laughs> Once out of the water, the threat from hypothermia and frostbite are severe. Getting dry and rewarming quickly is critical. So if you've if you've ever been to the beach and you you have trouble, you know, just submerging yourself into the water, people tend to do it slowly. Just imagine that, but on like a completely different scale. Because I think they said early, earlier in the video it was like negative twenty five uh, centigrade. So obviously it's beyond freezing. So it's, it's like that, but on a whole new level. And there's certain techniques you need to do. And even with, without equipment, it's difficult because you know, once you submerge yourself into the water, in order to keep the ice from breaking any further, you need to sort of flatten your body out and kick your legs in order to flatten your body out. So you can sort of uh, like have your body laying on top of the water and then pull yourself onto the ice, just so you're you're spreading the surface area of your body and not putting all the weight in one area, just trying to climb out of the ice because that's how it breaks. So it's taken like a technique like that, but also focusing on on the aspect of having you know equipment. So if you have a rifle, if you have a pack, you need to get all that stuff out of the water so you can actually push the fight afterwards. And you know obviously they need to sustain themselves and get warm or else they're going to be a cold injury very quickly or uh, you know, a cold casualty. So when training for Arctic Warfare, it definitely takes a certain level of patience. Now I haven't done uh, a whole lot of Arctic Warfare training. I didn't get to go to any specialized Marine Corps or Army Corps for this, but I've done a little bit of research on how to survive in these sort of environments. And it definitely takes a lot of patience and you know, thinking to be able to take your sustainment and your logistics and put it in an Arctic environment and even tactically speaking, taking all those tactics and, you know, changing it up to actually fit this environment. It, it gets pretty tedious, but it's definitely doable. And the, the Royal Marines have a history of getting it right. Royal Marines have been training in harsh conditions deep inside the Arctic Circle. After completing survival and mobility phases, tactical combat training is added to the mix. Deep snow and the unforgiving climate can make advancing towards enemy positions challenging. Troops must move and fight on skis whilst carrying weight up to 120 pounds. With the right training and equipment, small teams of determined individuals can infiltrate almost anywhere in these conditions. Ultimately, the role of the commandos is to disrupt and destroy a seemingly superior enemy against all odds. Yeah, so pretty much with, with these sort of environments, the only the only good thing you can sort of take away from it is it sort of gives you a little bit of a level of uh, security or protection in the sense that there's areas that you can take advantage of. You know, frozen lakes, uh, people don't tend 
to expect people to use those areas. Uh, there's wooded areas that can provide concealments and then also the snow itself makes it a little bit easier to mask your sound. So no, you know, night operations can be a little more successful. But even still with snow, there's other things you need to consider, like how your optics, how your equipment's going to work, you know, if thermals are gonna be as effective in the snow. So it really takes a mastery of this environment to be able to understand how all of your equipment and all your tactics are gonna work. So let's see how they do it, but um, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's gonna look pretty good. So even in any environment, when you're talking about reactive contact drills like this, it takes a lot of time to master the basics when you're talking about things like that. So when someone yells contact right, contact left, and everyone needs to move you know, in the same direction and, and fluidly so they can react to that contact or that threat as soon as possible, it, it's going to be a lot harder for them in this terrain, especially if they're using skis and have a little more equipment, a little bit bulkier. So it's gonna be a little bit slower, but you know you can see they're still maintaining their uh, their formation very well, and even when they're moving, they're maintaining their dispersion, which means like the spacing between each person. And even with normal terrain, people tend to to mess that up. So if you're not paying attention, it's very easy to get bunched up when you're focusing on other things. So it's good to see that they're maintaining their dispersion, and it's good to see that they're using their formations normally like they would in any other terrain. Fighting companies of the Royal Marines are supported by various mobility arms. Armour support group dominate the ground and bring troops into the fight. Commando helicopter force provide air support and amphibious raids are led by one assault group. These specialists enhance our capability, providing transportation, resupply and casualty evacuation so we can focus on fighting the enemy. So that looked really cool, but just thinking about how how difficult and how annoying it would be to try and operate a raft in you know freezing cold water, you need to look around, you need to look out for you know water that's actually freezing, so you're not just getting your raft stuck. You need to look for chunks of ice so you're not hitting that, and especially when they're trying to focus on all of this while they're going towards an objective, doing like amphibious landings and whatnot, like it can get pretty stressful if you're if you're under fire too. And the, the maintenance with those helicopters, the maintenance with all their systems in general, because when you're operating in an Arctic environment, even your weapons require a different lubricant. You can't just use like the normal CLP because it's not going to work the same. So thinking about all this and making sure that they can still operate as a team very well is, is, a, is a big challenge. But it's clear to see that they have this on lockdown. Even it's a common technique for them to take their ski poles and use that to sort of uh, support their weapon while they're firing. So they're pretty much, it looks like they're teaching uh, a lot of the stuff that my buddies have gotten during these Arctic Warfare training courses. But the fact that they're able to, to do it so efficiently really goes to show towards their professionalism and their discipline, especially in an environment like this. Because when you're cold and you're miserable, and just in any environment, regardless of the, of the cold and how it affects your, your body physically, Mentally, it's just going to make it so much harder to avoid being complacent. So it's cool to see the, the Royal Marines making sure they have, you know, all their specialties on lockdown. I'm not sure if this is the actual, like, part of the mountain leader course or if this is, like, a, something that mountain leaders go to after the fact or if it's just an advanced training that any Royal Marine uh, unit can go to. So if y'all could provide some clarification on that, um, I'd love to hear it because, uh, it's just either way it's cool to see that they have 
uh, units specializing in different things. Because you never really know where these wars are going to take you. You know, it could be inside the Arctic Circle. It could be, you know, in a, a human environment like South America, somewhere in Africa, a temperate environment somewhere else. So it, it's, it's very important and it's obvious that they're, they're taking it seriously. So it's good to see that some allies of the U.S. are, are doing it right for sure with uh, this multi, multifaceted training. But if any of y'all have went to this training, um, please let me know how your experiences were. It seems like they did like three weeks of training, if I heard that correctly. But even still, three weeks in the, in the Arctic Circle is going to take a toll. And it's going to prepare you for, for what the fight could be like. And then obviously, you know, with wars like the Korean War, you know, people have been operating in those environments for sometimes months at a time. So if y'all have went to that training uh, or anything similar, let me know. Uh, I'm not sure if it's like a rotational thing or what have you, but I know the U.S. Marines have a rotational unit in Norway, and I think it's every six months or so, maybe a little bit shorter. But yeah, it, it's very important to train with our, our allies in the Arctic Circle because they know how to do it right because they have to live there. But it's very cool to see. But I really would love to go to this training. Now, people say, you know, in hindsight, you probably wouldn't want to go because, you know, some of these training environments are miserable. But it, it it's really getting that, exper that experience in operating these environments that really builds you as a soldier. Because if you're adaptable to a bunch of different environments, then you, you're sort, sort of the subject matter expert in that in that field if no one else has any experience. So even getting, you know, pepper sprayed, getting tased, I at least have that experience so if you know someone needs to train with it or what have you you can help them out so it's always good to broaden your experience but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you have any other training videos like this um i know there's a good a few good ones on the royal marines page if you have any good ones send them my way because it's it's awesome to see what the allies are doing but i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you on the next one